internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. And today is the seventh day of protein week, which means it's the last day of protein week. And I know that this isn't going to specifically be about protein, but today I am feeling the overwhelming need to talk about the concept of loving your body. I spoke about it in a previous episode where I tell myself the affirmations, hey, I love my body, I love my body, it loves me, it works, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it wasn't until this week when I spent some time researching basic information about what my body needs that I'm starting to understand that I can say I love my body, but because I didn't show it that love, um, I was an abuser in a toxic relationship where my body was starting to have the only choice it had to leave which was to break down and possibly die. And yes, that's that's an extreme way of thinking of it, but it is what clicked and seems to be what I'm realizing right now, this week. <laughs> My body feels great. I feel exuberant. I feel joyful. I feel peppy. And getting enough protein and exercising is not going to fix issues that I have where I have to mentally work out trauma that has been some part of my life or having a bad day or having hormones hit me, but it is elevating my mood. It is giving me energy. And no, I'm not trying to sell you on a high protein diet. We will get later into how to recognize someone trying to sell you on a diet in this very video. But that's not what this is about right now. <laughs> it's about my relationship with my body and it finally clicking to be good to it. So I have previously mentioned that I had an issue with hives where my body was just breaking out in hives every two days. I had inflammation markers, I changed my diet, and took allergy medicine, so it was a combination here, and that fixed her up. And when I stopped having those hives, I kinda just said, mm, I'm good with my diet now, and I went right back up on my weight. I fixed it for a small time, did not care about the fact that this could happen again if I didn't fix it, and can you imagine how sad my body must have been to be like, hey, okay, thank you for fixing this. Um, and me promising, hey, I'll do better, stay with me, and then my body having to go through the utter bullshit that I put it through yet again. It is sad to think about it, actually. <laughs> um, and when I was in my 20s, being skinny wasn't about being healthy. It was about outward appearances, which that is diet culture. It is not about a healthy lifestyle. It is, I am dieting to be appealing to the people around me. Fuck what my body needs. And on the same token, you say, okay, I'm gonna get rid of that negative stereotype and not care and still do nothing to educate myself, to consider how harmful I was being. And yeah, I'm thinking of my body as a separate entity right now because it is dawning on me that if I were to do this to another person, I would be an abuser. To not care about its needs, to sit there and say, hey, I love you, and then hurt it. I, there are tears of frustration and being mad at myself. For doing for doing that. Even starting this journey, it wasn't purely health motivated at all. Um, it was so that I could enjoy my life and not have my body get in the way. <laughs> and I really want to work with my body. Um, I'm gonna need to take a minute. We'll we'll resume this in a minute. Uh, you know, I never thought I was a crier, and then I started this, and I'm realizing I might be a crier, which is okay. Okay, so, all right, so what I'm trying to say in a more concise way is the diet plan that I stuck to in my 20s and the no diet diet plan of completely ignoring everything, they were all diet plans that were sold to me in some miraculous way. So with the extreme idealists of fat acceptance, they say that you can be healthy at any size, and that is not true. It just simply isn't. We know this. We can see it with our eyes. Um, people shouldn't be discriminated against because of their weight, obviously. But I honestly couldn't say at 210 pounds that I was living in a healthy body. And I know this, but I actively chose to try and ignore it. On the flip side, if someone is trying to say, hey, this diet is especially healthy for you, there needs to be ways to see if that is true or not. The best way is to be armed with information. To get that information, you need to talk to your doctor first. Simple as that. 
If you're being told you're healthy at any size, no. If you're too small, you're not. If you're too big, you are not. If you are medium sized, you still may not be healthy. <laughs> okay, this is also important to remember. The only way you are going to know if you are healthy is if you talk to your doctor about what your health needs are. You need to know if you have dietary restrictions, health conditions that need to be addressed, what kind of vitamins you need, all that stuff. And look, I talked to my doctor, yes. They said, hey, you should get down to a weight of around 120, 125 after taking appropriate steps to make sure that they were telling me the right weight. And they told me, hey, eat chicken and broccoli <laughs> because they already knew I didn't have any health concerns. She then referred me to a dietitian who then should have helped me address how to get healthy. So this is not the doctor's fault. She sent me to someone who specializes in nutrition. Um, but here's where it went wrong. <laughs> so quick story time on this. Before I had my first consultation with her, they said, hey, she does an online class. Why don't you hop into that Zoom call? So I did. She showed us the My Plate. And if you guys are curious, it's the new food pyramid by the Department of Agriculture that is supposed to help people see what portions they should have on their plate. There's a lot of debate on that plate. But the biggest one I saw was that there should have been two plates. One if you are plant-based and one if you are practicing an omnivore diet. There's issues with it. But for the most part, hey, it works as a visual aid to say, hey, this is, you should be getting a well-rounded amount of each thing. Sounds great. But then I started noticing like everyone in the Zoom call was chubby, except for one person. And that guy was agreeing weirdly with everything she was saying. Like he's not a dietitian, but everything she said, he would interject himself in and say, oh yeah, yeah, I did this and it's great. And like when the subject of keto got brought up because a lot of us were chubby and so of course it got brought up of hey what do you think of the keto diet oh it's evil it's the worst decision i ever made in my life oh that's the that's the guy by the way the dietitian was like oh it's not a good diet it's, it's going to cause you cardiovascular disease red meat is unhealthy for you there's so many other options so i mean that was kind of like a little red flag that kind of just popped up there and then later on she showed us a morning breakfast meal that contains no meat and the milk was soy milk, which I think soy milk is fine, but um, I just wanna mention that I noticed there was no meat on any of that menu. So another red flag, cause no dairy or meat options in a breakfast. There were foods that contained protein, but none of them had the essential nine in them. So if you're gonna do that, you need to at least cover the essential nine, I think. I know that now, but I noticed it was very caloric. So I asked, hey, what would be the calorie count on this? Especially cause we were all overweight. That is something we need to know. And she said, oh, it doesn't matter. It's mostly fiber. I don't want you counting calories, which that's fine if her goal is for people not to count calories. But as someone who specifically is overweight, trying to lose weight and knowing that calories are the main reason, and we're generalizing here, the main reason people are overweight, and as you start looking at foods differently, you might want to explain why calories don't count if it mostly consists of fiber, which she did not. So um, I did not go back to another class after that. I thought it was very weird. I still had the consultation. She starts out by telling me that I am extremely fat and that I need to weigh 110 pounds. Fair enough, I was overweight. I was obese. At 210 pounds, at my size, I was obese. I can take that criticism. If you have to tell me I'm fat for me to understand that I'm fat, go right the hell ahead. Do not tell me I should weigh 110 pounds though when I have not gone in for a body scan for you, you haven't brought out the calipers, not even a damn tape measure. No, don't do that. She then went on to tell me that you can't eat fat if you're trying to lose fat, which um, we know fats are an important fuel source. They burn efficiently. They keep you full. You just have to be aware of them. You have to be aware of the amount. Telling someone not to eat fat, especially for a woman, is actually the opposite of what you should be doing. Fat for women is a good thing. And then the last thing that kind of just clued me into all of it was she asked me what my perfect diet would be like and I didn't know all the diet plans. So I said um, something where there's not a lot of processed foods. And then I went on to admit that, hey, I usually use frozen fruits and vegetables because it's easier for me to know what's in stock, what's in season. And that is when she mocked me and made a sound to replicate that I was someone mentally challenged. <laughs> Let's just go with that. 
Um, and I actually did not hang up yet at that point. I was just kind of sitting there shocked and stunned while she continued to then berate me on my choices. And I started realizing she wasn't giving me any choices. And that's when I just kind of hung up. I closed my laptop and hung up. I was shocked by all of it. So I went onto the provider's website, read her bio, found out that she was an activist for a certain group, watched the videos on YouTube that she had for that provider, noticed no animal byproducts whatsoever, and put it together. And then when the provider called me and told me that she was doing it to other people, honestly, all I can say is that I'm surprised she wasn't fired for malpractice, cause holy hell. So, signs you might be getting secretly sold a diet that you did not sign up for or ask for. Uh, flashy before and after photos. Those ones usually come with, I lost 30 pounds in 30 days and I hate those, so be aware. I mean, Photoshop, lighting, just straight out lying can make all those photos happen. And if you watch TikTok and you see some of the girls that are like, oh, I did a glow up in 30 days and then they got their skinny best friend hanging out in the back, yeah, that, that's a way that they do it too. Uh, also, extreme promises and exaggerated claims. So just like before, 30 pounds in 30 days, no. You didn't put on the weight overnight and you're not gonna lose it overnight. You gotta be patient and consistent and listen to what your doctor says. And then there is overly restrictive diets. Looking at you, carnivore diet. Anything that says you should cut out anything without being told by your doctor that you have a food allergy or it causes you a health risk, don't be cutting it out. I mean, I am not gonna cut out sugar. I'm gonna limit it because I know what it does. Still not cutting it out. I mean, I, that's a that's a little exaggeration. You can cut out sugar, but you're not gonna be as happy, maybe, if you like a morning coffee with sugar. But anything that cuts out one of the three macronutrients, you really should be questioning. Um, I'm just gonna say all miracle products. And yes, I did take Ali, but I, I think that was more because I was cheap that it started working because I spent $100 and because of that, I changed my diet and exercise routine. It helped probably, but even Allie said it has to be done with proper diet and exercise. It doesn't revolutionize the way I eat. It doesn't melt the pounds away. It says it's a diet aid. So still not as bad as Miracle Pill or Shot. And the last one is how do you feel when someone is pitching you a diet plan? Are you starting to feel anxious, pressured, question what the fuck are they saying to me? You have to get on this right now. Rather than taking the time to go make a doctor's appointment and see your doctor, it is a diet plan they are trying to sell you. It's important to recognize these factors. Um, it's good for your physical and mental well-being because if someone's promising you something should fix your outer appearance without putting any work into it, it's gonna mess with you inwardly. It's gonna mess with your head. You're being told by the skinny person buff person, this is what fixed me, and it's not working for you, that's gonna mess with you mentally. It just is. So we gotta, we gotta arm ourselves with information. And because of my lack of information, my unwillingness to learn just because of my past traumas, and yes, I'm gonna put my body in third person now, I neglected, I abused, and I hurt my body all while saying I loved it. And the only thing I can do is move forward and do better for it. And that is what I'm going to do. I am so thankful it finally clicked. I don't know what made it click, but it finally did. That can be slow sometimes. All right, and now that we have talked about poor decisions, uh, I think I'm gonna make another one today. In my head, this is gonna sound good, but I'm gonna try and create my own recipe. So the protein waffles with Greek yogurt and the apple cinnamon oatmeal, and then I sprinkled on like 10 blueberries. Uh, that was amazing. That was my favorite meal I ever made. So I figure why not mess with it? I think some chicken on that is gonna be just fine. I'm gonna sprinkle 100 grams of chicken on top of that. I think it's gonna taste good. Chicken and waffles taste good. Apple chicken pie tastes good. Why wouldn't it taste good, right? What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. And no matter what, I'm going to eat the end result because I don't waste food, which me not wasting food is not going to save any starving kids in Africa. So if it means that I lose weight, I am willing to waste food at a restaurant, but I am perfectly proportioning out these foods, so I will not waste them here. <sighs> okay, with that being said, I, uh, weird, weird end to protein week. I'm so sorry that this is the end that you guys get for protein week, but it is. That being said, let's get cooking.
Okay, first things first, the calorie count is 684 calories. So round however you want. 44 grams of protein, 22 grams of fat, 85 grams of carbs. I think that's a nice balance. Puts my protein for this meal at 25%, my fat at 28, and the carbs at 47. A little unbalanced, but good enough. So let's see if I made a horrible mistake with this concoction. I'm gonna make sure I get chicken, oatmeal, and waffle, and yogurt all in one bite. Where's the waffle? Okay, there it is. I'm a genius. That tastes amazing. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go enjoy this. That is really good. Thank God. Whew. Because it's a big serving. If it tasted bad, that would have been rough. But okay. I'm gonna eat this. I got no plan for today. So we will see where the day goes. All right, I have just gotten done video editing this morning and it was a long one. I had a lot to say apparently and some of it may offend some people, so sorry. But if you are gonna take anything from all of that that I said, it is to do research. That being said, while I was doing research on the carnivore diet, I came across a channel I wanna share with you guys. The creator is Brianna Jewell. I will link her channel in the description box down below. And while I'm talking about other things I found, I think I have found the best workout channel there is on YouTube. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of it just real quick right here. Please, please enjoy. Is this not awesome? Their channel is also down below. I love it. I think it's fun and happy. And speaking of fun and happy, I hope that you find my channel fun and happy. If you do, hit that subscription button or like button. And if you hate it, go ahead and thumbs down it. And with so much being said in this video already, I'm just going to end with what I plan to have for dinner, which is another portion of the beef and broccoli. That will put me at 1,335 calories for the day and 86 grams of protein, which I am happy with. And let you guys know that my new weekly average is 159.85. That is 12 pounds down from my starting and two pounds down from last week. And normally I would do progress picks today, but we're gonna do them tomorrow. I have a cat that wants to hang out, so I can't be bothered with them today. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that resonated with you today or anything that you particularly hated that you wanted me to kind of stop talking about. I'm all ears. With that being said, I hope you guys are treating yourselves well, both mentally and physically, and I will see you tomorrow. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Okay. Bye, guys.